everybody. Welcome back. We're back on the road, back on the air, back on the airwaves. I don't I don't know what else what else is there? Back on back back on the streets. Back in the saddle. Back stop for the backdrop. It's 407. She's real heaven. My 407. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up 407. Today is the made big major torchlight run 5k torchlight run downtown Minneapolis um, it's just it's just the run that I do every day pretty much 5k except maybe I will run like 3.03 miles and the 5k is 3.1 miles things like that things of that nature it is when is it? It's Wednesday. Um, 86 degrees is on the digital readout. H six or it's kind of warm. But when I went out to walk around the walk walking path at work here today, um, they said it was dew point was Siri said the dew point was 55. That's pretty comfortable. Um, it's going to be a warm run. I'm going to be sweating. I'm not going to be competitive, like, trying the best that I can. Even though, I could, like I said when I was walking out on the walking path, I could, I could pull out a 26, 27 minute 5K. But I'm not going to, like, I'm gonna run with Paulita. So if she could, if she could pull a 26, 27 minute 5K, then what I would have to keep up with her. So well, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna run with her. I'm, I'm planning on it. I'm be, planning on being able to do it nonstop or do whatever she needs me to do. So we'll see. You know, I'll be on tomorrow's show and I'll tell you how it went. Uh, I did not run yesterday because I just wanted to rest for today. It's not, you know, it's not a, I'm just going to go here. It's not a major race or anything where you need to rest up for it, but I thought it'd be just be, just be good idea to rest got some cars coming on the merge here they're doing the giant u-turn normally there isn't any cars on the giant u-turn today there's a few um, see how that affects our merge doesn't look too bad I'll just fall in be here behind this Lexus SUV with a trailer behind it an empty trailer at that behind it 4010 she's real Ben my 4010 giddy up giddy up giddy up 4010 you know what like when I was back on the road over there I saw it change to 408 I thought I had an internal chronometer keeping keeping me aware of what the time was when I could be 409 and um hang on the Honda Accord Flying through in the left-hand lane, I had to make sure he wasn't merging, not merging, but changing lanes into the center lane as I merged. Now we're crossing the bridge with all the girders and ready for another girder. Raise the troll bridge. I looked, I looked for that commercial on uh, YouTube. I couldn't find it. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. If you watch, if you want to sit and watch through um, a bunch of '70s kid toy commercials or something, you probably find it. But if you're searching for just that commercial, yeah, it's you're not gonna find it. Just searching, like I, I looked. I think I searched "Razor Drawbridge." I was looking for that. That what do you call that? That. Quote, there's a, you know, there's a word, like, you know, that hook, not that hook, but that line, tagline, is that tagline? I searched, I was searching for that, 
Rain to draw bridge. Ready for another girder. Couldn't find it, but I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Uh, it's 4011. What do we got over here? Oversized load, a truck bringing in some bulldozers to this area. They're doing some digging in the dirt over here too. That's interesting. Hey, I finished editing the mini golf video. I think it's I'm I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's it's kind of long, but I think it's pretty cool. We, I merged Brooks Holt's video of Can Can Wonderland with my footage of, that I took when we were in the same golf course merged them together and then I put a I put a little box with our scores in the bottom right corner it was pretty hard for me to do it's pretty hard um, I don't have probably don't have the editing software that Brooks Holt has he's got a nice little logo in the bottom left corner with it says whole number and you but all one, two, three, you know, and then he's got his name in the color of his ball. Then he's got Alicia's name in the color of her ball. And then he just, as they make their putts, ding, he puts a little ding, and then he increases the, the score and keeps a cumulative tabulation in there and all that. Mine doesn't do all that. I, I and plus. His his writings are really small, and you can you can read it, you can read it easily, but mine are pretty big. I mean, comparatively speaking, my little box is like twice as big as his. But I have four people in it, and I did make the I made a red square, a yellow, a white square. A, uh, orange square and a yellow square to match our colors of balls and then I put the number I put our names in the top of the square and then the numbers in the bottom of the square of our score so it, it, it works I'm finished with it but you know what I was I was I was saving it from um, iMovie and it wasn't finished when I started the drive home show so I just started a drive home show I don't know if it can do two things at the same time if it can save the video and record drive home show at the same time I don't know we'll find out when we get home that's what we'll do today's a big torchlight run 5k downtown in Minneapolis not 86 degrees. It's a warm one out there, but it's not so humid. Have I got a Lulu of a Twins game to tell you guys about? Now, normally I would go into great, great detail, but there's so much happening that I can't, I can't spend all the time on the details. But the Twins, our Twins are facing the New York Yankees yesterday. And I told you on yesterday's program that they're facing this Herman guy, so they're probably not going to win. And we had uh, uh, Gibson, K K Kyle Gibson. And I just last time we faced him, he shut us down pretty good. So I, I said I'm not counting my chickens before they're hatched. I'm not I'm not really counting on a win here, but I hope so. I hope so. We're on the Pine Springs Mountain Media Curve, everybody. 4.015 is the time for Pine Springs Mount of Eni Curve. Well, the Twins got off, was it the first? No, it was the third inning. Jorge Polanco hits a home, solo homer to go ahead one to nothing. And then right after that, Nelson Cruz hits a home run, solo homer, go ahead two to nothing. That happened just. Was it against Oakland or was it against the Yankees? That just happened. Back-to-back -back homers from Polanco and Cruz. Um, so this time it was 
Vim number 15 for Polanco and number 21 for Cruz. So he took a 2 nothing lead. Uh, then, um, did they come back in time? I don't remember, but we went, we got some few more homers. We got a nice two out, three run homer from Miguel Sano later, maybe fifth inning, maybe fourth inning. Anyway, we're ahead. Yeah, it was fourth inning. We're ahead eight to two. We knock out Herman in the fourth inning. Eight to eight to two. I said, "Oh, it's safe to." I'll take Tory for a walk now. We got this game in the bag. We got this game in the bag. So I came and took. I went and took Tory for a walk. And by the time I came back, it's eight to five. It was eight to two. And by the time I came back, it was eight to five. And I'm texting Todd. Todd's texting me about, you know, oh, I'm really enjoying the Twins. They're, they're roughing up the Yankees and blah, blah, blah. And, and I was re replying to him and I said, well, yeah, but the bullpen hasn't been all that good lately. Uh, you know, they've been blowing leads. And, uh, oh, this truck is really cool. What a jerk. That's really cool. And I, anyway, I said it's already we're winning eight to five, eight to two. Now it's eight to five. But as I was typing that, texting it to him, the Twins got another base hit, scored a run, and make it nine to five. I go, oh, check that nine to five. Well, it stayed that way till the eighth inning. Brought in uh, Blake Parker, not to be confused with. Bryce Harper or Brian Harper or Dave Parker. Nick Bramer said, he's been our most reliable pitcher in five consecutive outings without allowing a run. So what happens? Yeah, he gives up five runs. And the Yankees go ahead ten to nine. Now in the in the middle of that, they took they took Hart, Parker out and they brought in is it Tyler Duffy? And he's pitching a Voigt. Is it Luke Voigt? And he gets him 0-2. So he's trying to get him to chase. He loads loads the count, fulls the count, 3-2. He delivers as Perfect pitch, beautiful curveball, breaks right over the plate, and um, catcher. I don't know if it was Castro at that time or Garber at that time. They both played last night, but the catcher catches it just right, right in the bottom, outside bottom corner. It's in the little box that they draw on the screen. It's right in the bottom corner Full count. of this box. So Breaks right over the plate. Beautiful, beautiful pitch. Castro with words for Ramon and Moy Smalley's like, Duffy oh, that's a beautiful pitch. That's a strike. And everybody and starts, a strike and you know, the pitcher, and Duffy, starts walking towards the dugout. The umpire doesn't back. call it a strike. I'm like, how can you not call it a strike? As a matter of fact, I capture that video just that little clip there I put it posted it on Facebook saying this is why the twins well I'm, I'm gonna be a spoiler alert but I said this is why the twins lost the game if you you know you remember this game you're gonna remember this game for quite a while I'm I'm no surprise I'm not surprising you with anything here it's, it's already happened um, very next pitcher is the Gregorius. He hits a two-run double off the wall, and that's what made it ten to nine. So we're like, gosh dang it! But then uh, bottom of the eighth, they bring in was it Zach Britton, who's got like a 0 0.01 ERA or something. We get a walk. 
Snow comes up and he just crushes, just demolishes a pitch. It's in the upper deck above the batter's eye. Kind of to the left of the batter's eye, over the bullpen in the, in the upper deck. 457 feet. He just crushed it. And we're back ahead 11 to 10. And I said, I said to Paulita and to Todd, well, it's too bad it's the eighth inning as the Yankees to get another chance to bat. If it was the ninth, that would be a walk-off and we'd win. So what happens in the bottom, in the top of the ninth? Um, we walk a guy. Now who's pitching now? It's, it's Taylor Rogers now, our closer. He walks a guy and then gives up a two-run homer to Aaron Hicks, former twin Aaron Hicks. Now, now, Yankees are winning, 12 to 11. In the bottom of the ninth, they bring in a a roll this a roll this Chapman, their closer. I'm driving through a cloud dust. Dusting the dust cloud. So what happens to Aroldis Chapman? He walks the bases loaded. Then this Polanco coming up. Polanco makes contact, hits hits the ball solidly. Here's Dick Bremer. Here's a drive! Ah! And it's caught like he not even on the warning track in left field. I don't know what he was screaming about. It did look like he hit it pretty well. But it was just a fly ball. But it did tie the game. Sacrifice fly. Tie the game. 12 to 12. Um, but we don't score anymore. And we go into extra innings. And then um, the extra innings. The Yankees get two runs in the top of the 10th. Wow, that car is driving pretty crazy. Coming up to our freeway time sign. After that, after the Yankees got two, it's 424 right now, coming up to the sign, I'll, I'll pause and let you know. We got six minutes and we got 13 minutes. So we should get, should cross at 430 over 35W. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you. I turned the game off in the top of the 10th after they got two runs. I was just like, okay. I've had it. Um, it's too much of an emotional roller coaster and everything. Uh, come to find out, the Twins loaded the bases in the in the bottom of the tent, and Kepler was up, and he hit a ball very, very well, line drive, very well, and Aaron Hicks made a diving catch, but. Really, when you watch it, you can kind of see that he's got it measured. So I was like, okay, yeah, it was a diving catch. Yeah, but you can see he had it measured the whole way. And he really didn't have to dive. He was more like he just left his feet just to make sure that he was going to squeeze the ball. You know, I'm like, it was more like a dive after the catch. But he could have just jumped and caught it. And you could see he's, he had it measured out. Really, I mean, it was, it was nicely hit, and it could have been a game-winning, a bases-clearing double if it, if Hicks was 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 playing a different place. I mean, he, he hit it really well, and it had double written all over it, but. He just was in the right place to go and go and chase it down. I mean, if he was maybe five feet more to his left, then it would have been a bases clearing double, a game winner probably. Um, you know, Kepler's a lefty, and center fielders usually shade over towards right field, and it seemed like he wasn't shaved. Shaved. What is it? 
not shaved. What's the word, you know, kind of when you're cheating over to shaded. Yeah, shaded. If he, if he was shaded over toward the right field, like you would normally think you would be for a left-handed batter, that might have been the bases clearing double. But he was not shaded over that way. He was kind of more straight away center field and he's able to run it down. But so the Twins lost 14 to 12. It was a good game, but it was heartbreaking because we had we blew an eight to two lead. Well, I mean, which which lead do you want to say we blew? It was one time we were winning eight to two, but then it became eight to five, and then it became nine to five, and then it became ten to nine. So we blew a nine to five lead. Then we came back and took the lead. And blew another one run lead. So we blew. What are you doing? Uh, that is just. It's things I see some of these drivers do. Man. There would be reckless driving tickets. Um. I was going to say something about the game there. Um, oh, the, I was going to say something about the Twins' blown leads. They have Twins have blown 11 leads, okay, in their last seven games. It was a game against the Mets where they had the lead three times, and they blew it three times. Yeah, last night they blew two leads. There's, they've blown at least one lead, and for the last seven consecutive games. So their their total, the blown lead total for the season is up to 45. Last year, at this time, they were they had. 43 blown leads. So they have more blown leads this year than they had last year. Their bullpen is really shot. And you, you got reliable relief pitchers blowing leads. Taylor Rogers blown, not only blown two leads in the last few days, but two saves. When he blows a lead, it's a save. It's a blown save. You've got starters being given leads and blowing it. You've got relievers. you got Blake Parker, who has been reliable. Now he's blowing leads. you got Trevor May, who's been reliable. Now he's blowing leads. Move over. You've got... Whatever. I'm done with that. I will say this. They brought up two young kids. T uh, Trevor uh, Thorpe. What is his name? Lewis Thorpe? The guy is from Australia. He got his first win yesterday. Not yesterday. The day before. And then we beat the Yankees 8-6. to six Because Martin Perez could not hold the lead. Yesterday, we brought up this kid, Shawshank Spishak. And, um, hey, it's 4.30. We're about to cross 94 in a few seconds. I'll tell you if we make it. We're almost there, like 10 seconds. 9, 8, still 4.37, 6, 5. Oh, I just changed to 4.31. We did not make it. Not make it. Yeah. I'm across that right now. We even missed it by two or three seconds. Um, the Shawshank Spishak guy pitched like two and was a two and a third innings and he didn't allow a run. That was good to see. But I think we need seasoned veteran relievers who okay I'm gonna just 
side if I have to get off. I'm gonna go to at least Silver Lake Road here. We need seasoned relievers that are proven, that can handle it, that can do the job. We need to get some, at least one, preferably two. Now, I've Steve, my brother Steve told me that we got we signed Cody Allen from. He was a reliever for Cleveland, and he did very well. But apparently he was injured, or I don't know. But he's in the minors, and he's looking good. But why haven't we brought him up? That's what I want to know. Why haven't we brought him up? I think I'm going to get off on Silver Lake Road. We got some brake lights. Yeah, I think that's the best decision. Got brake lights coming on. 4.32, everybody. 4.32. It's 4.32 and on your dial. Mm. Oh, you know what? What is that on? Did I turn it off? Won't you take me to? That's not the right one. You know, the, this... This, this part of the drive home show hardly ever gets hurt. And sometimes it's probably some of the best stuff of the drive home shows. Because it's, it's when you've already told everything. I need to drink some water. <sighs> okay, let me drink some water. That's going to be hot. But I need to drink some water. Yeah, this is probably some of the best parts of the sh drive home show is when you finish saying everything that you plan to say and then you're just trying to, you're talking off the top of your head and things come up and then you're like, oh, I'll tell this. But it hardly ever gets listened to is like when I listen to, when I listen back, then, um, I get to work in the morning before the show ends, and so there's like 10, usually about 10 minutes left of the show when I get to work, so I turn it off, and then when I, next day, I'll listen to the next day, so then that last 10 minutes doesn't get heard. But what I started to do is I started listening where I left off, so now, like this morning, I listened to May 9th, I think it was, and there were 10 minutes left of the show, or there was 10 minutes left of the show. And um, so now tomorrow I'll just go back to the main night and fast forward it to there's 10 minutes left and I'll just listen there. And then after that's done, then I'll go to the next day. The only problem with that is you gotta get your phone, you gotta look down, you gotta press the button to start the next day you know in this when they pass the law about you can't hold your phone and stuff and when you're driving and stuff that would be illegal well I passed 100,000 miles I'm standing very still I don't know I don't know do -do -do -do. I'm not going to the store because we're having the torchlight run. And so we're just going to get ready to go. It doesn't start until like 7.30. So we've got plenty of time. It's only 4.36 right now. And we've got plenty of time to get there. It's just that we need to get our bearings. We need to figure out where we're going to park. Where do we 
line up for the line, the starting line, and, you know, that kind of thing. So, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to line up according to how fast you run. And I guess there's going to be staggered starts, so like the, the fast people are going to start first. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I'm just going to go straight home we're going to get ready to go and I'm not going to eat there's a funny episode of The Office I think it's the first show of, I don't know which season it is like season 4 or something and uh, Michael Scott He's driving to work and he's talking to the cameras. And then he's kaplump. He hits Meredith in the parking lot. She's okay, but she's not dead, but she's like hurt her hip or something, so she's got to go to the hospital. And find out that. by some animal that had rabies. I don't know, I don't know that part, but basically, Michael Scott wanted to um, raise awareness for rabies because of that. So he decided we're gonna, we're gonna have a 5K run for rabies, rabies awareness. So like, just everybody in the office is gonna run, that's it. It's a 5K. They're talking like, it's just really weird because like, they gave Toby some, I think they tried to give him like X-Lax, but then instead they gave him like modium to like firm your stool. So and then he's like, usually, Usually I have to stop and, and go to the bathroom and run like this, but today I feel really good. Like, it's it's a con picking 5K. You can, okay, I, I figured this out today. You can walk a 5K in 45 minutes. I'm gonna go, because you're just sitting there. You can walk a 5K in 45 minutes. If you walk four miles per hour, it's a brisk, but you, it's very, very doable pace. And uh, you can walk a 5K in 45 minutes. So how, how much faster can you run it? You know, I run it in 26, 27 minutes. It's like, you can't go that long without having to stop and pee, really, really. But the funny thing is, um. Michael Scott was like scarfing down some pasta like you're not well they used to do that for cross country team they would have a pasta dinner the night before or before a meet but not the day of the meet I don't you know whatever so he's scarfing down the pasta right before he runs and then he like I don't know he gets cramps cramps up and he can't even walk or something. It's just funny. It's just humorous. And he just kind of made like a 5k is this super long run. It's not. It's not. It's not a marathon. A marathon would take like four hours for me to run. Yeah, it's I figured that. I sat and figured this out before. Um, I think a mar is it a marathon like twenty um, k? Is a marathon twenty k? Well, let's just. No, oh, is it forty k? Yeah, it can't. It can't be. A mile is more than a kilometer, so it's got to be more than twenty six k. So it's probably forty k. 
So it's like running eight, five Ks. Let's say you ran a five K in a half hour. So eight times that would be like hours. There, there you go. There's your estimation. C442, we're coming down in Mississippi Street, everybody. We're heading down to this four-way stop sign. I don't know the name of the street. It's the one that's got the giant pothole-like thing there that people always drive in. I move over to the left to avoid it while still staying in the lane. It's just it's a four-way stop over by the Hayden Heights School or Hanson School or Haynes Elementary School. And then there's this church over here too. It's called um, I'll tell you when I can read it. car in front of me knew to avoid the pothole. It's called United Methodist, Fridley United Methodist Church and it's Haynes Elementary School. So we're just passing those guys right now. Met the Roosevelt Franklin by Elementary School. You are the sons sunshine. home apartment home over here by the library they dug up their parking lot too and redoing it so lots of redoing of parking lots around here in this neighborhood four forty four it's all fours right now forty four degrees or milometers at 404.4 I need safety pins for my bib on my running shirt. It glows in the dark. It's just a blue shirt. It's got like torchlight on it and they said it glows in the dark. Okay. Kind of a plain basic shirt. But you get a metal, you get a glow in the dark metal too, I think. Okay, green light, we're crossing uh, University Avenue. That'll begin, that's the beginning of the end of our drive home show. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, keep your feet in the ground. Keep reading for the stars. Don't forget to drive home safe, everybody. Tomorrow I'll let you know how we did on the race. And I will update you on the Twins game tonight. We've got um, the pitcher for the, the Yankees is like Hap. Is it Hap? And a pitcher for the Twins. Not even sure. Oh, it's Odorizzi. Yep, Odorizzi against Hap. I think it's Hap. Anyway, that's going to do it for the show. Hey, what is this? That's all scraped up.
See you next time.